moment of truth. Hello and welcome to another army video vlog. We're going to be jumping straight into this one. We are painting, we are working out how to do marble bases. It went really well, I'm super pleased with them. Um, please like, comment and subscribe. Uh, any questions at all, uh, pop them below and we will definitely uh, give anything from this series some tutorial love, uh, probably starting from next week if people would like to see it enough. So uh, yeah, enough waffling. Uh, let's just jump in and do feel free to check out previous episodes if, uh, if you'd like to watch any more that have come out. There's four more already from this series, but we are putting paint on something. Let's jump in. All right, so I need a break from assembly. We are pretty much done with that, apart from the keeper. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've got to, <laughs> I've got to put paint on something before I go mad. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play with trying to make some of uh, our bases into marble ones um, because I think it looked nice for the army. So let's give that a bash. Moment of truth. Hey, that's all right, isn't it? That's pretty cool. I'd say that's really been fairly successful. Um, it'd be nice to have like a hint of blue or something in there. Um, but I don't think there's anything we can really do about that. Could maybe still wash it. Uh, could absolutely still dry brush it to make the raised areas kind of pop. So I guess we'll. Uh, We'll give that a quick go now. I think wash first. And the idea is that this should add a little bit of depth, which I think it's doing fairly successfully, bringing out those lips and details. And even if it doesn't strictly, you know, make sense in terms of what marble is like, I'm I'm fine with that to bring the uh, the contrast to those areas, highlight the details, and stuff like this crack should definitely be darker. Could uh, gloss varnish this beforehand and then it would just be localized towards the recesses. I think that's pretty successful though. I've got some marbling going on on the right hand side of my palette. Uh, I've just tied this one off to make it a bit easier. Uh, while the other one is drying, I thought we'd test a second. So this one, I've gone for one that's got less, um, less large holes. And we'll see how this looks. Moment of truth. Oh wow, that is interesting. That is that is a little bit crazy. I think that looks better on camera than it does in real life, if I'm honest. But still, quite a cool effect. Hit it with a wash, and let's see, let's see how it looks after that. So I guess we'll let that one dry and see how that one looks too. Just a quick one about washes. You probably noticed me put about a million things in that dish. I think there were five different things in it. There was the blue and green washes from Games Workshop. There was also some Lamian medium from Games Workshop. I then added in some glaze medium from Vallejo because I like the way that it makes things flow. It's, it's a wonderful flow improver. And the final thing that made a really big difference is um, I then ruined a load of the flow stuff by putting a few drops of airbrush thinner in there, which is the one that completely changes how it looks and just smashes up the tension or breaks the surface tension. It's the same reason that people put washing up liquid in things. So I will go through washes uh, in depth at a later date and kind of give the breakdowns of everything that you can do for them because there is so much that you can do to get way more out of washes. I was really pleased with this one. The ratios were roughly pretty much equal for all of them, apart from them for the thinner. And of course you can add more water in if you like. If you are adding water in, you need to counter it with medium, otherwise you're more likely to get tidal stains, tea stains, coffee stains, drying marks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'll use tea stains, we'll be British. But uh, yeah, um, you do be, need to be mindful of that if you are adding water in. So if you're putting more water in, counter it with more of something else. But um, you, you can just avoid it altogether these days. There's so many other good mediums out there. Uh, which will make it less volatile. Anyway, let's jump back. I go for a very careful, quick dry brush. Not sure if... 
Okay, that actually looks really good. <laughs> okay, winner. We've got our method. That is going to do. Um, well, it's not often that experimentation that new to me goes, uh, you know, solidly first time. These are bigger bases, though. This is a 40. I've got a lot of 25 mils in my army, so I guess we'll see how that goes. Uh, pleased with that, though. Uh, definitely works at a larger scale, and if it's not perfect at a small scale, never mind. Hopefully it looks great on the big bases like the Keeper. Okay, so we need to work out something that's got better coverage than Looper Core Green. Oddly, I just don't seem to have another equivalent of that in my collection, I don't think. I want, like, a deep one. Neither of those will work. Too far off. Everything looks more blue on this camera today for some reason. These are greens, honest. Um, so what I'm going to do is maybe try mixing a couple of these. Both of those will have insane coverage. That's definitely leaning a little bit towards the bluey turquoisey spectrum, which obviously I don't have too much of an issue with. Okay. So that's equal parts of each of those. <laughs> yeah, that seems strong. Okay, fingers crossed. Oh, there we go. That's better. It, it might need dialing back. Um, but, you know, we can add black into something. That's super easy. We are doing a Slanesh army and it is meant to be over the top. So maybe, maybe these colors are okay. Oh, that was a mission. Um, I'll be finding a substitute for Celestia Grey as well. Just uh, made it difficult. It's not quite got the coverage that's required. So, reveal. Fingers crossed. This did get quite wet because of the Celestia. So... Okay, I reckon that's pretty good. Um, again, that looks better on camera than it does in real life, I have to be honest. I'll give it a quick wash though, and a dry brush, and black up the rim and it should look pretty amazing actually. I think overall it's got some nice texture on it this one. Okay so our wash has dried. That has dialed it back a little bit which is kind of helpful. Um, I'm not sure if I prefer the more whitey ones or not. I think this looks really nice but I think that might just be that the base has got a devil's face on it which I like. So let's give the dry brush in a go see where we can get this one to. Now this is this is Proquil's full titanium white which is nuts for coverage like really 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 heavy so i should manage to if i'm careful buff things up a fair bit towards white got to be careful though because at the same time i could obscure a lot of what makes this look like it is marbled so whoops obviously there's been a kind of pocket of moisture in there with a the dry brush that's a bit unfortunate so right in there i didn't realize crap there we go see that jump out whoa sneaky that could have been a uh, pretty catastrophic actually maybe i've uh, happened on a new form of marbling those lines actually look kind of appropriate because we've already got the lines from the uh and the baby wipe strands going on, you know, like these ones here, having some more, they just get lost, so could have been worse. Bit of an issue that bit, maybe we can cover it with a robe or something. Doing pretty, pretty careful, soft buffing here, circular motions, not looking to get any streaking, any of that type of stuff. I think that looks pretty good. Definitely much more like this one now. They gel together quite nicely, uh, but I will be finding um, an alternative for Celestia Grey. I've got a Tamiya one here. I'll see if I can get that close. Um, the coverage just isn't, it's not helpful. It might not matter on the smaller bases, but it definitely does on the medium and large ones. So there is pretty much everything apart from the three Vanguard laid out. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a start on some mass basing.
there we are. So I told myself I'd spend an hour on that stage did. I've put some lines on them. I'm not sure if that will work or not, but it just, it, it felt like maybe it wouldn't make anything any worse. I am trying to work out the most efficient way to do this. This is going to be attempt one. <laughs> you know. Oh well. <laughs> uh, there, there will be some efficient way to do this using like a frame or magnets or something like that, but I don't have magnets on the other side of the bases or anything. So I'm just going to work out as I go on. String might actually be quite efficient without the masking tape or maybe just masking tape, but um, I, I think some strips would probably be the most efficient way to be able to keep it really tight. That's the important thing. This is fairly tight, but that's the reason that I put the kind of the strings down here in between just to keep it a little bit more snug. Um, as long as it doesn't move around while I'm spraying, we should kind of be okay. So yeah, let's give it a go. With stuff like this going on, it should be immediately clear to people that I don't quite know what I'm doing here. Um, that's just part of doing stuff in a rush. Uh, like we're gonna screw up, we're gonna fail. If you saw like my airbrush has started belching all over itself because I took the needle out at a point that I shouldn't have to clean up the tip. You know, um, things go wrong all the time when you're rushing. As long as it doesn't go too wrong on the model, like let's keep the mess for my hands, my airbrush, my area, which is a state. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna try and do our best job on the miniatures and the bases. And um, you know, if something does go wrong, as long as it's not like some final stage in black that's like tiger stripes, often it's gonna be pretty easy to fix it. So mistakes will happen. I am expecting them to happen way more than they have already. And we will just roll with them and hopefully none of them are kind of, you know, colossal screw ups that we can't fix. Uh, but yeah, um, we will be probably by the, by the last set of five bases or something, I'll be like, right, that's it. That is exactly the way to do this. But I don't have that novelty. Uh, you know, I don't have the time. Um, so we're just gonna make things up as we go, experiment as fast as possible, and maybe halfway through we'll figure out the perfect way. But uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be all right. Let's jump back. This is quite fun though. I quite enjoy this type of thing, to be honest. Okay, so let's see how this has worked. Okay, I think we're good. That that white patch is too big, uh, but this is what I think the wash is gonna make okay for us. So this huge white patch here, um, rather than just being plain white, we're gonna put back some of the green hues um, with the wash and that's why it affords us. So I think the wash is actually a huge part of how we can make this technique work in a forgiving manner. So that took, I don't know, about 10 minutes all told, I guess I need to make it more efficient than that for the others, obviously, but we'll work it out. Um, the other thing that I need to do is make sure that I remove all the fluff off them at this stage before I go to the wash stage, because uh, once you've washed it, there's not much of getting rid of it. Um, you can pull it off and the lines it leaves won't be bad. Again, it's forgiving, you know, striations or variation in it are fine. It's covered in variation anyway. But uh, yeah, they've turned out all right. So let's just rock on full speed ahead. And like I said, by the end of it, we'll probably know exactly what we should have done in the first place. This is the small base idea I've had. It's just a ruler with tape reversed around it to keep stuff on there, super secure, almost too secure if anything. And then I've taken the baby wipe, started from one side, wrapped it around really tight and then tucked it under. So let's see how this goes. Let's go through the process, start to finish. I have removed the previous one. I'm going to rearrange the baby wipe so as little as possible of it has already been used. Um, not necessarily because it gives a bad result, but because it just makes it hard to tell where you've sprayed. Um, so then we're gonna use the tension, bracing it, fold it over. We'll worry about neatening up the back in a bit, but for now, 
all of our, all we're concerned about is stretching it and you want to stretch it both horizontally and vertically both ways make sure that it is super tight and then basically at the back you just get it out of its own way the tape will hold it there and that's when we bring the string into play this is actually the type of task that if anyone has the ability to do standing or, or has a sit stand desk 100% do it like that because you know you're just you're moving around a lot more than you would be if you were painting normally so if you've got a workbench or something like that and you can get your airbrush there without it being too much of an inconvenience I would definitely recommend that so all of this is just about keeping keeping the back stuff out of the way you don't want it coming around because if you if you get any hard edges flapping over they really do stand out quite a lot and the reason for the string is because it's actually quite easy to end up not hitting the sides of your bases which you need to do even if you're going to paint the rims black um, some details just have to be hit from the edges so that's why I'm doing the string and it's absolutely fine if your bases bulge over in fact you'll get a better result if your bases do bulge over because more of them will be overhanging and you shouldn't have any access issues. And I'm just going to find a couple of bases that are fairly far apart. Double wrap it around here, take that out of the way, and then we're good to go and we'll hit it with our various mixes. So the mixes that I've decided on are a primarily grey one to start off with, Sky Grey from Vallejo. It's got a little bit of sky blue, uh, coincident that they're both from the sky. Um, that's stage one. And then for stage two, what we're doing is we're grabbing a little bit of pastel blue or white. I've, I've mixed it up a little bit with mine. Um, I haven't, you know, I haven't paid too much attention, but we're, we're going sky blue here. I think the blue is quite a nice touch. And then finally, if I feel like doing another one, we're putting white in. You can just mix these two. Um, it depends how my coverage has gone, uh, but they're what we're going through while we're spraying it. Two or three steps, up to you. You know, depends on what time deadlines you're working to. I, uh, I want these to look pretty swanky though, so I'm not doing them at maximum speed, but I am doing them as fast as possible with all the steps that I've got in them. All right, that was a big sesh and it was 90 minutes longer than it needed to be. I made a really stupid mistake and I should have, well, basically I should have dry brushed prior to the wash, um, which would have looked far better uh, as it was. I washed, then dry brushed, then the dry brush was too stark. Uh, so I had to knock it back with a second wash. So I had to add an entire wash stage that I didn't need to do really. Um, bit silly and I could have been less careful with the dry brush if I'd done it knowing that I was going to put the wash over it so I think about 90 minutes lost which means because I have been keeping track that was 200 minutes to paint the bases roughly um, I've been taking <laughs> taking uh, I've been recording it I want to see which bits I dropped the most time on just kind of out of curiosity um, you know never had some nerd out on the stats over these things but anyway Pretty pleased with the bases, look very tidy, uh, all been rimmed, all that type of stuff. So they are literally ready to go and I'm fairly sure they're 100% finished. I don't think I can put blood on them or anything like that. Although I could if I wanted or, you know, drop some like autumn leaves on or something like that. That stuff can be done really easily in like 20 minutes at the end. So that's the type of task that I save until the end. Um, so yeah, we have some painting down. First day of painting is done, five left and we still haven't painted any of our models technically, but we have finished their bases, which means that I am gonna to get to look over here and uh, add a new bit and fill in a new bit. Um, 
So yeah, anyway, pretty pleased with how that's gone. Really satisfying to do. I would thoroughly recommend this. I will answer any questions people have about the process, but definitely 100% we will be putting out a proper full tutorial on how to do the marble bases thing. So it was my first time trying it out. I spent probably 90 minutes or two hours experimenting and I've definitely picked up some things that can make it significantly easier and a little bit more effective as well. So great, really pleased with them. Uh, we just have to paint an army now uh, on today five, tomorrow, I guess. I need some sleep. <laughs> just looks pretty shaded, really. I feel like I've wasted my time a bit.